Each year, the USAP takes a look at the pickleball rules, looks at your suggestions, and these are some rule submissions that are gaining traction. Pickleball lovers, don't forget to have a good day. One rule change that got submitted, it's gaining steam, is the color of the pickleball paddle. Is this cheating? Top right hand corner, it's a white paddle, and some white on the shirt, but it's also a red paddles too, white and red paddle, white and red shirt. You can't see the ball off the paddle, let's see that in slow motion. Very tough to see, right? Later on in the video, I have a white on white paddle that I'm wearing. I'm not calling Brian out, but I think we're both cheating here, Brian. Top right hand corner, he's driving, tough to see. This is an MLP, Major League Pickleball Rule, that applies to colors. Keep in mind, this does not apply to PPA or APP. This is strictly Major League Pickleball. The MLP identified four colors. White, yellow gold, yellow green. I didn't know that was a difference. And of course, neon. You see that sometimes in tournaments. And let's face it, this MLP rule is a little confusing, but they are trying to fix the problem because of this MLP rule. The Lux paddle by Selkirk has been banned in some colors, right? Some other paddles. Now that we know that, what is the rule submission to the USAP? And let me read verbatim. Safety and distraction. A player may be required to change apparel, also player's equipment that is inappropriate, including that which approximates the color of the ball. There's no percentage in this rule. They're just saying change the color, and I kind of like this. This rule is targeting white, yellow, neon, and gold pickleball paddles, right? Like the Selkirk Lux. One version of that was banned in the MLP. Bottom right-hand corner, Keith Valentine playing with the Lux. Look at his shirt. Look at the paddle, you decide. This is a really good point. My point is if the ball is coming fast off that paddle, you're not gonna see it as fast as if he wasn't wearing that white shirt with that paddle. And look at Cliff in the top left-hand corner. He is very slow at identifying where the ball came off Keith Valentine's paddle with that Lux. It's white, the white shirt with gold on the shirt as well. Because it's tough to see off the paddle, especially if you're wearing the same color. For example, the diadem icon is white, and I'm wearing white, and it's very tough for them to pick up on the ball, and it's a huge advantage for me, and I'm somewhat cheating, right? We gave Brian so much trouble at the beginning of the segment, but I think it's more unfair what I'm doing. Look at me, I'm in white with a white paddle. Ed Perez, who plays pro, drops his paddle because he can't see the ball. Look at it in slow motion. It's an unfair advantage that I got a couple weeks ago. Did I know I was getting it? I take the fifth and look at me, top left-hand corner again. Very tough to see the white paddle with the white shirt. And again, that's me going nuclear. And everyone remembers the neon outfit Coco Goff wore in tennis, but you have to keep in mind pickleball is played at a much closer proximity, especially at the kitchen, and any slight advantage, even to the eighth of a second, is gonna really help you a lot because it's close proximity, like I said before. Senior pro Mark Napotovich made another really good point. He called me and said, Joey, it's not just seeing the ball come off the paddle. When people are wearing white on white, it's very tough to see the angle of the paddle. He's extremely fast and he looks at the angle of the paddle and he can't really see. Let me ask you a question. What can you see better? Now we'll do the white. <laughs> now this isn't totally white, right? Probably more than 20%. The red helps a lot. The diadem icon's pretty white. You can see the video like you just did. But my point is, it is an advantage, and Mark Napotovich thinks it is too. Good luck. You should have stopped at game one. This match may have been famous for some other controversies, but again, neon top right hand corner, same exact color oh as the Dora ball, right? Same exact. Some fighting. 
I told you, this was very controversial. But again, neon ball, same exact color as a pickleball player's shirt. And yeah! it's an advantage, I believe, unfairly, right? People get upset. Here is how the proposed rule change reads. Safety and distraction. A player may be required to change apparel, also player's equipment that is inappropriate, including that which approximates the color of the ball. Honestly, wearing the same color as a pickleball paddle is a huge advantage. Having white, yellow, neon, and gold paddles probably shouldn't happen. I think they should adopt this rule submission for 2024. MLP has already done it already, and the PPA and APP should respond accordingly. Imagine driving two hours to a tournament or flying across the country to play a pickleball tournament, playing one match and flying back. That's what they're doing to you right now. The rule submission was just for senior pro and pro players to go to single elimination if they didn't have time, if it rained. Look, we all understand the PPA and APP needs to make money when they broadcast these events on ESPN and other channels, right? So they need to know who's going on, which is why the proposed rule for single elimination took place. But why did the rules committee pass it and change it to amateurs as well, right? It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense and it's gonna prevent a lot of amateurs from going to events. Why? Because I talked to Mark Napotovich and he was really upset it was for senior pro. And let me speak for my clients. I try to get them to play tournaments all the time, right? It's expensive, but I'm like, do it. You'll make friends, you'll laugh. It's like a carnival. I live for these tournaments, I really do. But if I send them off to Naples, three and a half hours away, they lose one match and come back, do you think they're gonna play again? We all love Pickleball USAP. If I could play a tournament every single day, I would, but I don't wanna play just one match and be out. Because most of the time I lose my first match, go through the loser's bracket and do well, right? Now keep in mind, these were rule submissions that passed by the rules committee. However, the board of directors still has to vote on these by the end of the year for them to go into effect next year. The second rule that passed to make tournaments shorter is rally scoring. The tournament director will have the option next year to go to rally scoring, not just in singles, but in doubles, if they need to get the tournament in, right? If it rained or they don't have enough time. And I understand that, it's not horrible, but I hope they don't start doing tournaments just with rally scoring. Now, if you're not familiar with rally scoring, every single point counts. If you return and win that point, you get a point. If you serve, you get a point anyway, you always do, right? Every single point counts, and when I'm playing rally scoring, I play a lot less aggressive, and it does change my style, and some people say it changes the game. Honestly, I don't like either of these rules. I think it's bad for pickleball, I think it's bad for the amateur pickleball player, and I really hope the USAP Board of Directors does not okay these rules by the end of the year so they don't go into effect next year. The first rule that passed by the Rules Committee and has to be sent to the Board of Directors for a final vote is this. It's major. You're not allowed to throw the ball anymore, right? Before, in the past, you could throw it by accident. If the referee determined that you did it on purpose, it's a fault. Now, you can't throw it, period. It's supposed to take the judgment call away from the referees, but really does it because the referee still has to decide if you threw it, so it doesn't help the referee much. And I don't like this rule at all. I think it makes a referee's job more complicated. Why not just allow throws? It's like an accidental thing. I don't think anyone is that good. And wait for it because I'm going to the next rule that should have passed that didn't. And you're gonna get mad at me, but it's a drop serve should be the only serve, period. Let me say that again. The drop serve should be the only serve in pickleball, period, to make the ref's job easier. There's been so much controversy on this already with Tyson McGuffin, right? And I love the guy. He's a stand-up guy, but he's going to do what he needs to do to win. The case just hit an illegal serve every, every time, time and hope they don't call it. Right. The case just hit an illegal serve every, every time, time and hope they don't call it. Right. My point is, can a referee really tell that the wrist is above the navel at impact? I believe my navel's here. I'm not quite sure, but they have enough responsibilities, right? 
They passed the throw rule to make the referee's job easier, but they did not make the referee's job more easy, unquestionably the most complicated call in pickleball because it's a judgment call and that's what they're trying to change. In my mind, this is the most significant change to pickleball in a long time. Coaches can coach you when you're playing a tournament, right? You can get advice. And pickleball is such a strategic game. I completely disagree with this. However, I will say, I go to a ton of tournaments and people do coach. Have I tried to coach my clients? Yes, because I get caught up in the moment. So I actually like this rule because people are gonna coach anyway, like in tennis, so why make it illegal? Pickleball lovers, are there any other rules you wanna see? Please leave it in comments. Save 10% on any paddle. Keeps us in business. The only win-win in life. And don't forget to have a good day. Oh wait.